So this guy was telling me that he was in band in high school, and I was like, oh, cool. And he was like, no, 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 I wasn't in a band. I was in the band. And it's kind of funny how that one little word shifts the kind of band that he was in, but it's also kind of funny how the stuff that we thought was sort of dorky or nerdy in high school and now as adults is actually, like, kind of cool. That's a great example of how thin the line often is between cool and uncool. For example, take glasses. Stereotypically uncool, but take that same facial magnification device tint the glass lenses, and all of a sudden you have sunglasses, which are like, for some reason, the very definition of cool. And of course, the definition of what is cool or desirable is something that changes dramatically over time. Going back to, you know, like the Middle Ages for Caucasian people, it was very cool to be pale because that meant you were wealthy and lived a life of indoor luxury. Then the Industrial Revolution happened, and now all of a sudden, white people want spray-on tans. But this is not a series about melatonin levels, it's a series about nerdiness, so let's talk about that word. If we make like this spectrum of desirableness, like from not cool to very cool, there was a time in the not-so-distant past when nerdy was a synonym for not cool. Like, think about that. Because today, if you say something's nerdy, sometimes that's derogative, but most of the time saying something is nerdy is like kind of cool now. It's a really radical transformation that's happened during our lifetime. So here's a pie chart about why I think nerdiness has become cool. First we have what I'll call the Bill Gates effect. That is, people started noticing that nerds were getting very rich in the information economy. Secondly, the nerd fighteria effect which is to say that the internet allowed otherwise isolated people to find like-minded people and celebrate what they had in common, which was their nerdiness. And finally, what I'll call the superiority of stereotypically nerdy activities, such as gaming and consuming sci-fi books and movies. Basically, non-nerdy people looked at the things nerds were doing and were like, Oh, those things are actually really fun. I think we're gonna go ahead and start doing them ourselves now. What's this? Oh, it's the end of the notebook. The video's over. No! Oh wait, I can turn it over and draw one last graph using sparkly markers. What? Alright, so let's talk about the future through this prism that we've been talking about, the overlap of nerdy and cool in popular culture. First of all, is this overlap getting bigger or smaller? Is nerdiness ultimately going to become the definition of cool in our culture, or will nerdiness gradually recede to its previously low or uncool levels? And secondly, and perhaps more importantly, is the subversion of nerdiness by popular culture a good thing or a bad thing? A cynical person might say that nerdiness becoming cool allows for an opportunistic YouTuber to take advantage of nerdiness by using it in graphing videos on the platform for the goal of getting more subscribers. But a more optimistic person might say, hey, if nerdy culture is ultimately celebrating principles and values that we think are superior, then wouldn't it be great if even more people wanted to become nerds? A-M-P-U-T-E-E -E.